Hey guys, I'm here with my cousin Harper and we're going to be talking about this crazy experience that we both had. Well, she primarily, um, but it was at our grandmother's church and I basically want her to just tell you guys um, what she remembers and anything interesting that like, I can think of to add, I will chime in, <laughs> but yeah. Whew, okay, so... Her church is in West Virginia, and it's a non-denominational church. I was raised Methodist, and so I have um, experience with that. However, when I go to this church, automatically <laughs> it was a very different vibe, and it was huge. So the church is giant, and I walk inside, there's a gift shop and a full-size car just in, like, the lobby, and there's... And a grand piano. A grand piano, <laughs> and this playground, like, you, you, like, the ones at McDonald's, like... Like, with the tubes and everything. And I, I just had never seen a church like that before, so I was, I was confused, but then we go into the, uh, sanctuary, I guess, and that's also like this huge stage, like you're at a concert venue or something. Like the whole stage lights up. It has oh. so many special <laughs> effects. <laughs> and so I was like, okay, that's cool. Automatically, there's just like a very different vibe. Like at my church growing up, it was like you kind of wear like nice dresses or suits or just like sort of like very like kind of uptight a little bit and I always felt like I had to behave myself but here everybody was wearing jeans and t-shirts and very relaxed and very everybody was like kind of riotous loud um greeting each other hugging each hugging, other mm -hmm. even if they don't know you sort of normal not anything too out of what I was used to except um the preacher was very um, casual and just like a conversation kind of um, but it was really long like the service was a lot longer than anything I remember we were there for like four hours mm -hmm. whereas usually I would go for like a 30 minute to one hour service at my old church um, but <laughs> one of the things that I noticed right off the bat that was very different was they were singing in the choir just like any other church basically I guess and then people both around me and in the choir on stage started speaking in tongues granted that was my first experience with anything like that so I had no idea what was going on and I thought that these people were having um, seizures or something <laughs> like I didn't know what was happening at all and I was just really confused, Be me and my little sister, and I guess it was normal for everyone around us, so no one else was questioning it, questioning it, and we thought we were like going crazy or something, and it was very like, you could feel the like the vibes of everybody in the air, and everybody was just so into it, um, so we were like, okay, and I, I don't know, it almost sounded like they were speaking different languages and stuff, um, but then... All of a sudden, like, something in the air changed, and all of these as kids especially, like, younger people my age, like, high school, middle school, even little kids, started running out of the sanctuary, and I didn't know where they were going because I wasn't used to this church. And then I see up on stage, there's, like, this high up, um, platform, and I see the kids starting to emerge from the stage up on this high platform, running out, and greeting like a preacher the person like holding the kids and like dunking them down they would re-emerge all wet and I was like okay they're getting baptized but it was like people running and running I guess up some stairs somewhere do you remember seeing me get and baptized? then Taylor did and I saw her like run out and she was just like bye guys and <laughs> <laughs> like I just need to explain what happened with that so basically, um, no one was getting baptized. I think I was one of the first people to get baptized because someone, random lady, was like, God wants you to get baptized. And I had just gotten back from church camp, so I was like, if God wants me to get baptized, I'm gonna go and do it. So I went with my other friend who wanted to get baptized with me, and 
I remember when I got up there, this is my first time being baptized. And these are the only two things I remember. I remember looking down and seeing a wave of people running towards the stairs. <laughs> Harper looking bewildered. <laughs> That's, that's already two things, but the third thing that I remember is um, I had an e.l.f. eyeshadow primer on and I remember I went under the water and I came up and my makeup was perfect still. Like, I remember that. I was like, thank you, Jesus. I'm not getting paid for this advertisement. <laughs> I want to preface this sort of, um, I told my friends that she was agnostic because um, I wanted her to see all the crazy stuff that I have been seeing, like healing, speaking in tongues, and like actually get proof and like not think that these people are crazy. Like I wanted her to just like see something valid. I hear tell that all the young folks are upstairs. After getting baptized, I guess they're, I don't know, drying off. I don't know. <laughs> so I, I take my little sister because I needed moral support for this. So we march up the stairs and all of a sudden at the top of the stairwell, there's this huge gathering of people, like a circle of people. And it looks like, I don't know, like they're they're all doing something, like like a campfire, but it's like in this church. And so I walk over and I kind of like look through this huge crowd of people and there's somebody lying down on the floor and everyone has their hands on this person and they're all saying, like some are speaking tongues and some are saying distinctly like, in the name of God, heal this person. Which that's fine, like if that's your thing um, that you believe in, that's great, I hope it works. <laughs> But the thing was, as they were praying for this little boy's leg to be miraculously healed, I think they, I think they did it, or I don't know, at least they thought that they did. So at church camp, he had his leg hurt, and they healed it, and then we were playing sports, and then he hurt it again. So we were back at church trying to fix it again. So they, they healed him, and he was like jumping and running and all the way, like, my leg is fixed. But as this happens, there's such a large crowd of people that this lady, she is praying for the little boy, but as she is praying for him, she falls and breaks her arm. It was... And so Elijah's up and running around, and now, She's laying on the ground and everyone in the crowd that was already gathered is praying for this lady now. Because they're just like, we were just trying to heal, so we should, let's just do it still. Like, let's just go ahead and heal this one too. And so she has to get like taken away because I don't think it works. She had to go to the ER. <laughs> yeah, that. <laughs> one healing a day, folks. <laughs> then they all kind of clear away, like all the adults go away and it's only like, I, I want to say like 10 or less teenagers. And there's this one guy in particular that like, he like attacked me. Like he fucking came up and like cornered me. And he was like, I don't know. He was saying like, some creepy shit. He was like, God wanted me to tell you that you're so beautiful. Like you are gorgeous because God thinks so. And I need you to know this. And I need you to believe in yourself. And I was like, I do believe in myself. I don't need you confirming that and saying it in the name of God. Oh my god, it was so creepy. He like pushed me into this room that was like um, a nursery and he like sat me down and I was like so scared. I was like, where is everybody? Like this, he's gonna try to convert me. How's he gonna convert? It was just like, I was scared. But then Taylor like knocked on the door and she like came in and got me. And I was like terrified at this point, like these religious Z-lots like trying to convert me, but then I like ran part. away, I tried to go back downstairs to the sanctuary to sit with my grandma and just wait it out, wait for that night to be over. But I'm in the stairwell and I'm at the top and all of a sudden like I swear just like seven or eight of these teenage like weird religious people come up and corner me. And I'm just standing there, and it, it's like one of those horror movies where they like yes. gaining on you, and, and you're just, just like slowly in that no, like cornered. slow motion. And they were all crying. They had tears coming down their eyes because they were sad because I was going to hell, and they wanted me to be saved. And they were hugging me and touching me, and I'm not a touching person. I don't like to be touched. I really don't. And. They're placing their hands on me, touching my head, touching my shoulders, and just like getting in my personal space, crowding me. 
and then Taylor like comes in and finds me in this position with all these crazy people around me and she's like guys like lay off and I was like about to cry I was like having a panic attack the girl just kept trying to like console me even though I was not the crazy one in this situation she was touching my head touching my face um crying her eyes out um like touching me, hugging me, just getting all up in my personal space. And um, Taylor basically had to just like tear her off me and be like, guys, she's okay. Like she's not, you know, interested in your advances right at this point. Like I'll try to talk to her. I'll try to work on her tonight. And they were all, they like, it seemed to like be okay with them at that point. Like Taylor has me under control. I just have to say like, um, I remember distinctly when everyone was like on Harper, she was like, you're all crazy. <laughs> and she tried to leave and I was, I was dying. Like, I'm not gonna lie. Like, like, I don't know if I was outwardly laughing or inside. Now was, it's funny for me, then <laughs> not so much. Me, like, I don't think it's funny except for just, I think it's funny because of how ridiculous it was because the guy who approached her came to me and he was like, you know, like, I just gotta tell you, I think that she's into witchcraft and I really looked at him I was like so because my cousin doesn't look like you Hollister ass West Virginia Bible Belt people you think she's into witchcraft <laughs> I had like red lipstick yeah usual. And it's just like I was so offended I was like you can't just say that and he was like oh well God told me and I bitched at him. I was like, you can't just say God told you something so you can say things to people and think that you are enlightened or you're helping because if you are hearing this, it's not God because it's not true. And he cut me off for so long when I tried to basically show Harper um, in my way, which is I like to give people proof. So we went to the pool um, in my grandmother's neighborhood and I guess you didn't wear any sunscreen <laughs> at all <laughs> and um, she's very pale as you can see so um, she was a tomato like, <laughs> she got really badly sunburned and um, I remember I was like okay I want to try to heal your sunburn and she was just sort of like go for it and she laid down and me and her little sister were just, well, her sister was watching me and I sort of laid my hands on her and prayed. And then I watched, like we both watched her skin color go from red back to her natural color. And the next day, like it would take like a week for a sunburn to scab, I would think. Mm -hmm. The next day, your sunburn was scabbing. Mm -hmm. It was crazy. I want to believe what you want to believe. You want to believe in miracles, you want to believe in magic and that kind of stuff, and so you make yourself. But it did happen. Yeah. It did happen. I mean, we were, we were all three there. We saw my skin, like, change color, like, not exactly change colors, but, like, fade into my my skin color, so. Yeah, and for it to be, like, peeling the next day, mm -hmm. like, that never happens, so. The thing about the kid that, like, accused me of being a witch, <laughs> we, like, made up this elaborate plan because it was a Sunday when we went to church, but then we were going to go back on Wednesday. <laughs> And we were like, okay, I'm a witch now. Like, I guess I've just accepted my fate. <laughs> and so we were like, I'm going to fully commit to being a witch because if you're gonna call me one, so be it. And so we, we were like coming up with these like hexes and these like potions and all of this stuff to like mess with this kid who thought I was a witch. And <laughs> that's also so like, this girl didn't, Accept my advances. She's a witch. Like that's so <laughs> archaic. Like that literally <laughs> colonial. Like... I was playing Abigail Williams in the Crucible at that in uh, at my school at that point, same time. And I was like, okay, so in this play, I'm being accused of being a witch, and in real life, <laughs> it was a good character study. I'll say that. <laughs> I bet you really played that part. Like... Got a lot of inspiration <laughs> that week. <laughs> I'm really sorry that you had to go through that. I just want to say that because like I've been laughing this whole time, but it's been because it's just it was ridiculous. weird. It was, it was weird and scarring, but now I can look back and laugh because it felt like I was 
tripping on some really weird drug that entire night that made me like the attack of some religious like persecutors but yeah, I'm okay really now, like nothing actually really bad happened. These people honestly just believe what they believe and that's just who they are. Like, what can I do? I, I'm not gonna like, I don't know, like hate them. It's just how they're raised, probably a lot of them. And Definitely. People need certain things. Some people need their religions and I'm not gonna ridicule that. Like. If that's just what you need to console you or what you need to have find peace good <laughs> it's it's when they force it on you that yeah that, that it's becomes crazy terrifying and do you want to remove yourself really was like a scene out of a horror movie uh-huh and I'll remember that like for the rest of my life I've told so many people <laughs> that like if I have like a story to tell about um, when people are talking about like religious whatever I can bring that up <laughs> and it's a good story and I don't know how many of them believe me whenever I tell them it, but... This is proof. I vouch. This 100% happened. If I had it on video, I would insert the clip. I would be like... But me and I my don't. little sister talk about it so much. We're like, did that really happen? I can't believe that that really happened. So, um, I guess we're gonna end the video now and I hope you guys enjoyed these stories and <laughs> recollections <laughs> and... My cousin is not a witch, so. As far as everyone knows. Well, if you call her a witch because she's not into whatever you're into, <laughs> we're gonna cast a hex on you. Mm -hmm. Just for the sake of it. Yeah. But she's not Just a witch. Just to spite though. you. <laughs> I'm not um, a practicing witch, but only for only for my accusers, my prosecutors. <laughs> so don't call my cousin a witch. <laughs>